Chapter 4. Auto-Suggestion. The Medium for Influencing the Subconscious Mind. The Third Step Toward Riches. Auto-suggestion is a term which applies to all suggestions and all self-administered stimuli which reach one's mind through the five senses. Stated in another way, auto-suggestion is self-suggestion. It is the agency of communication between that part of the mind where conscious thought takes place and that which serves as the seat of action for the subconscious mind. Through the dominating thoughts which one permits to remain in the conscious mind, whether these thoughts be negative or positive is immaterial, the principle of auto-suggestion voluntarily reaches the subconscious mind and influences it with these thoughts. No thought, whether it be negative or positive, can enter the subconscious mind without the aid of the principle of auto-suggestion, with the exception of thoughts picked up from the ether. Stated differently, all sense impressions which are perceived through the five senses are stopped by the conscious thinking mind and may be either passed on to the subconscious mind or rejected at will. The conscious faculty serves, therefore, as an outer guard to the approach of the subconscious. Nature has so built man that he has absolute control over the material which reaches his subconscious mind through his five senses, although this is not meant to be construed as a statement that man always exercises this control. In the great majority of instances, he does not exercise it, which explains why so many people go through life in poverty. Recall what has been said about the subconscious mind resembling a fertile garden spot in which weeds will grow in abundance if the seeds of more desirable crops are not sown therein. Autosuggestion is the agency of control through which an individual may voluntarily feed his subconscious mind on thoughts of a creative nature or, by neglect, permit thoughts of a destructive nature to find their way into this rich garden of the mind. You were instructed in the last of the six steps described in the chapter on desire to read aloud twice daily the written statement of your desire for money and to see and feel yourself already in possession of the money. By following these instructions, you communicate the object of your desire directly to your subconscious mind in a spirit of absolute faith. Through repetition of this procedure, you voluntarily create thought habits which are favorable to your efforts to transmute desire into its monetary equivalent. Go back to these six steps described in Chapter 2 and read them again, very carefully, before you proceed further. Then, when you come to it, read very carefully the four instructions for the organization of your mastermind group described in the Chapter on Organized Planning. By comparing these two sets of instructions with that which has been stated on auto-suggestion, you, of course, will see that the instructions involve the application of the principle of auto-suggestion. Remember, therefore, when reading aloud the statement of your desire, through which you are endeavoring to develop a money consciousness, that the mere reading of the words is of no consequence unless you mix emotion or feeling with your words. If you repeat a million times the famous Emil Coué formula, day by day in every way I am getting better and better, without mixing emotion and faith with your words, you will experience no desirable results. Your subconscious mind recognizes and acts upon only thoughts which have been well mixed with emotion or feeling. This is a fact of such importance as to warrant repetition in practically every chapter, because the lack of understanding of this is the main reason the majority of people who try to apply the principle of auto-suggestion get no desirable results. Plain, unemotional words do not influence the subconscious mind. You will get no appreciable results until you learn to reach your subconscious mind with thoughts or spoken words which have been well emotionalized with belief. Do not become discouraged if you cannot control and direct your emotions the first time you try to do so. Remember, there is no such possibility as something for nothing. Ability to reach and influence your subconscious mind has its price, and you must pay that price. You cannot cheat, even if you desire to do so. The price of ability to influence your subconscious mind is everlasting persistence in applying the principles described here. You cannot develop the desired ability for a lower price. 
you and you alone must decide whether or not the reward for which you are striving, the money consciousness, is worth the price you must pay for it in effort. Wisdom and cleverness alone will not attract and retain money except in a few very rare instances where the law of averages favors the attraction of money through these sources. The method of attracting money described here does not depend upon the law of averages. Moreover, the method plays no favorites. It will work for one person as effectively as it will for another. Where failure is experienced, it is the individual, not the method, which has failed. If you try and fail, make another effort, and still another, until you succeed. Your ability to use the principle of auto-suggestion will depend very largely upon your capacity to concentrate upon a given desire until that desire becomes a burning obsession. When you begin to carry out the instructions in connection with the six steps described in the second chapter, it will be necessary for you to make use of the principle of concentration. Let us here offer suggestions for the effective use of concentration. When you begin to carry out the first of the six steps, which instructs you to fix in your own mind the exact amount of money you desire, hold your thoughts on that amount of money by concentration or fixation of attention, with your eyes closed until you can actually see the physical appearance of the money. Do this at least once each day as you go through these exercises. Follow the instructions given in the chapter on faith and see yourself actually in possession of the money. Here is a most significant fact. The subconscious mind takes any orders given it in a spirit of absolute faith and acts upon those orders, although the orders often have to be presented over and over again through repetition before they are interpreted by the subconscious mind. Following the preceding statement, consider the possibility of playing a perfectly legitimate trick on your subconscious mind by making it believe, because you believe it, that you must have the amount of money you are visualizing that this money is already awaiting your claim, that the subconscious mind must hand over to you practical plans for acquiring the money which is yours. Hand over the thought suggested in the preceding paragraph to your imagination, and see what your imagination can or will do to create practical plans for the accumulation of money through transmutation of your desire. Do not wait for a definite plan through which you intend to exchange services or merchandise in return for the money you are visualizing, but begin at once to see yourself in possession of the money, demanding and expecting, meanwhile, that your subconscious mind will hand over the plan or plans you need. Be on the alert for these plans, and when they appear, put them into action immediately. When the plans appear, they will probably flash into your mind through the sixth sense in the form of an inspiration. This inspiration may be considered a direct telegram or message from the infinite intelligence. Treat it with respect and act upon it as soon as you receive it. Failure to do this will be fatal to your success. In the fourth of the six steps, you are instructed to create a definite plan for carrying out your desire and begin at once to put this plan into action. You should follow this instruction in the manner described in the preceding paragraph. Do not trust to your reason when creating your plan for accumulating money through the transmutation of desire. Your reason is faulty. Moreover, your reasoning faculty may be lazy, and if you depend entirely upon it to serve you, it may disappoint you. When visualizing the money you intend to accumulate with closed eyes, see yourself rendering the service or delivering the merchandise you intend to give in return for this money. This is important. The fact that you are reading this book is an indication that you earnestly seek knowledge. It is also an indication that you are a student of this subject. If you are only a student, there is a chance that you may learn much that you did not know, but will learn only by assuming an attitude of humility. If you choose to follow some of the instructions but neglect or refuse to follow others, you will fail. To get satisfactory results, you must follow all instructions in a spirit of faith. The instructions given in connection with the six steps in the second chapter will now be summarized and blended with the principles covered by this chapter as follows. First, Go into some quiet spot, preferably in bed at night, where you will not be disturbed or interrupted. Close your eyes and repeat aloud, so you may hear your own words, the written statement of the amount of money you intend to accumulate, 
the time limit for its accumulation, and a description of the service or merchandise you intend to give in return for the money. As you carry out these instructions, see yourself already in possession of the money. For example, suppose that you intend to accumulate $50,000 by the 1st of January. Five years hence, that you intend to give personal services in return for the money in the capacity of a salesman. Your written statement of your purpose should be similar to the following. By the first day of January, 2000 blank, I will have in my possession $50,000 which will come to me in various amounts from time to time during the interim. In return for this money, I will give the most efficient service of which I am capable, rendering the fullest possible quantity and the best possible quality of service in the capacity of a salesman of describe the service or merchandise you intend to sell. I believe that I will have this money in my possession. My faith is so strong that I can now see this money before my eyes. I can touch it with my hands. It is now awaiting transfer to me at the time and in the proportion that I deliver the service I intend to render in return for it. I am awaiting a plan by which to accumulate this money, and I will follow that plan when it is received. Second, repeat this program night and morning until you can see, in your imagination, the money that you intend to accumulate. Third, place a written copy of your statement where you can see it night and morning and read it just before retiring and upon arising until it has been memorized. Remember, as you carry out these instructions, that you are applying the principle of auto-suggestion for the purpose of giving orders to your subconscious mind. Remember also that your subconscious mind will act only upon instructions which are emotionalized and handed over to it with feeling. Faith is the strongest and most productive of the emotions. Follow the instructions given in the chapter on faith. These instructions may, at first, seem abstract. Do not let this disturb you. Follow the instructions, no matter how abstract or impractical they may at first appear to be. The time will soon come, if you do as you have been instructed, in spirit as well as in act, when a whole new universe of power will unfold to you. Skepticism, in connection with all new ideas, is characteristic of all human beings. But if you follow the instructions outlined, your skepticism will soon be replaced by belief, and this, in turn, will soon become crystallized into absolute faith. Then you will have arrived at the point where you may truly say, I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. Many philosophers have made the statement that man is the master of his own earthly destiny, but most of them have failed to say why he is the master. The reason that man may be master of his own earthly status, and especially his financial status, is thoroughly explained in this chapter. Man may become the master of himself and of his environment because he has the power to influence his own subconscious mind, and through it gain the cooperation of infinite intelligence. You are now reading the chapter which represents the keystone to the arc of this philosophy. The instructions contained in this chapter must be understood and applied with persistence if you succeed in transmuting desire into money. The actual performance of transmuting desire into money involves the use of auto-suggestion as an agency by which one may reach and influence the subconscious mind. The other principles are simply tools with which to apply auto-suggestion. Keep this thought in mind, and you will at all times be conscious of the important part the principle of auto-suggestion is to play in your efforts to accumulate money through the methods described in this book. Carry out these instructions as though you were a small child. Inject into your efforts something of the faith of a child. The author has been most careful to see that no impractical instructions were included because of his sincere desire to be helpful. After you have read the entire book, come back to this chapter and follow in spirit and in action this instruction. Read the entire chapter aloud once every night until you become thoroughly convinced that the principle of auto-suggestion is sound, that it will accomplish for you all that has been claimed for it. As you read, underscore with a pencil every sentence which impresses you favorably. Follow the foregoing instruction to the letter, and it will open the way for a complete understanding and mastery of the principles of success.